Hey, what's going on guys? My name is FairTX and today I'll show you how to make your videos look more professional with this simple but very effective editing technique. Before we begin, I just want to say that I'm going to be doing a lot more of these tutorial videos along the way simply because I feel like they're long overdue. So if there's anything in particular that you want to learn, leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to make it happen. Now what is motion tracking? Well, it's a neat little trick that allows you to track text, motion graphics, or objects to your shot. Now, this can be done in multiple ways, so you can do single point tracking, dual point tracking, corner pin, and 3D tracking. But for the purposes of today's video, we're only going to be covering the single and the dual point tracking. So you're probably going to be asking me about these callouts, and that's your first mistake. Because once you have this effect ready to go, you can put anything you want in there. I'm going to make a separate tutorial on how to make motion graphics, because in this video we're going to be looking at the big picture. So we're in Premiere Pro. And I got this little clip that I want to track. Now you might be wondering why because the motion tracking is done in After Effects and I'll show you. So I like to be doing these on the fly. And what you're going to do is you're going to hold down Alt key or Option for Mac and you're going to drag this clip in the track above it. I'm just going to mark this red because I know this is not going to be a part of my main composition or the final composition. You're going to right click and you're going to select Replace with After Effects Composition. What this is going to do is it's going to open up the same clip in After Effects. So whatever changes we make to the clip while in After Effects, it's going to apply in real time in Premiere Pro. So this is called dynamic linking. Of course, you can just open up After Effects, import your clip like this and do the effect right here. You can then proceed to render out the scene or you can send it to uh, Premiere Pro. But again, this is just my workflow. So we're in After Effects right now. And the first thing we're going to do is go to Layer, New, Null or Null Object. Now I want to track this little handguard because I want to make a little call out with the name of the handguard. You know, it helps new players. We're going to rename this Null. Handguard Null. And this Null is what we're going to be using to track our motion. Step two, go to Composition, New Composition. We're going to name this Handguard Comp. I think six seconds. This is about right so we're going to click OK. You're going to go back to the main composition and you're going to drag the handguard comp in the middle. I'm just going to turn this yellow so we can see it better. This yellow layer right here is our footage. I'm just going to rename it footage. OK. I like things organized, right? OK, everything seems to be ready. We're going to move on and find our tracker box. If you can't see this little box right here, all you got to do is go to Window, Tracker. Sometimes it can be unticked, so you're not going to be able to see it. So go to Window, Tracker, boom, it's usually on the right side. The first thing you want to do is select your footage layer right here and go to Track Motion. You're going to see these little boxes appear along with this little crosshair. So what are these? So the outside box is called the Search Region. The inside little box is your Feature Region, and it defines your tracking point. This little crosshair right here is the attach point. So what we're going to be looking for is high contrasted points or high contrasted areas because that simply gives the tracker more data to work with. Keep in mind though that you want to keep this box um, relatively small and you can also see that this clip is um, it's a pretty stable shot. It's just me you know, going forward pretty much. So you want to keep this box as small as you can because the bigger the box, the more time the tracker is going to need to process everything. So this seems about right. As for the search region, I'm just going to leave it, yeah, about yay big. Next thing you want to do is go to Edit Target and select your handguard null. The null object is what's going to hold all your tracking data. So we've selected the null. We only want to track the position for now because this is a single point track. And all you got to do now is select Analyze Forward. You can also analyze backward analyze one frame backward or one frame forward, but this is a pretty stable shot. Like I said before, I just want to see it better and click analyze forward. Now this can take some time depending on the shot and how big the search region is. So this is a great example of why you want to use high contrasted areas. You can see how the little crosshair moved. But don't worry, we're going to rectify that. So the tracker finished and it's pretty stable from what I can tell. 
So if you're wondering why this occurs, it's because the shadows kicked in and it confused the tracker because it used to have a very high contrasted area beforehand. And when the shadow appeared, the tracker said, nope. So in order to deal with this, you can just move the tracker right here manually and problem solved. As for the rest, all I'm going to do is select my footage layer, hit U to display all the keyframes. I'm going to delete the remaining keyframes right here. And I'm going to start from here where the tracker is still, you know, OK. I'm going to do this manually and I'm going to select Analyze One Frame Forward. I'm going to do it again for this one and again for this one. And now you can see that the tracking data is correct. I think this one is also not very good so I'm gonna hit analyze one frame forward so what we're gonna do now is hit apply make sure to uh, have the handguard null once again as your target and you're gonna hit apply and just like that the null object has all the data that you need to track this handguard you can see how it's it's following let's take a step back if you're doing this in After Effects alone and you're going to render it out, all you got to do is select your handguard comp, select this little pick whip right here, drag it onto the handguard null. Now if you go inside this little comp right here and type in handguard, scale it down a little bit, and then return to your main comp, and make it white and see it better. Now watch this. Boom. Just like that, we have our tracking motion onto our handguard comp. But for the purposes of this video, I'm going to go ahead and delete this handguard layer and show you another trick. I'm going to go back to my main comp. I'm going to unparent this null. And I'm going to hit P to display the position on the null. Do the same for the handguard comp. Let's make this like, yeah. So what you're going to do now is go to frame one, copy the position and paste it onto your composition below. All you got to do now is hit control C or copy uh, on the handguard comp. Go back to Premiere Pro and paste. And now watch this. I'm going to delete this duplicate layer because we don't need it anymore because the rest of the editing is going to be done in Premiere Pro and I want to continue working with this. Um, source footage. We have this handguard comp pasted, right? So what you want to do now is double click. So whatever you put in this little composition right here is going to show here because we have the tracking data captured. I also found that this way is um, way less intense on your PC. Boom. So if we turn off the base layer, we still have this main composition with the handguard track data. So whatever you put in this composition, whether it be motion graphics or uh, other objects, let's just create a color mat. So I'm not going to be covering um, motion graphics in this tutorial just to show you what you can do. So I'm just using a, a regular color mat. I'm just going to add some shadow and Give it a little stroke. Yes, you can also do this on the text layer, but if you're gonna be doing like motion graphics and stuff, this is very, very basic. You get the picture. Now, if you nest these two, it becomes one, right? All you gotta do now is adjust the position and voila, you got your little call out for the handguard. See what I mean? Also, this might seem long because I'm, you know, I'm trying to be thorough. Now, just to show you how fast you can do this, three, two, one, go.
that was pretty fast, right? Okay, now we're gonna jump into the dual point tracking. And for this, I'm going to create a new null object. I'm gonna call this null or weapon null. I'm gonna create a new composition, weapon comp. And by the end of this, you'll see how the uh, two point tracker is a much better option in some cases because it also tracks the rotation and the scale. So you wanna select your footage layer and go to track motion, edit a target, select the weapon null object, hit okay. But this time you also wanna check the rotation and the scale boxes. And you can see we don't have just the one, but two tracking points. We're gonna attach this one here. This seems like a contrasted enough area. I'm gonna leave the feature region right here. And now I'm gonna hit play to analyze the movement forward. Okay, I can see some problems right away. And from this point on, the tracker messes up because of the shadow. What we're gonna do now is hit U while having our footage layer selected. Go to our tracker. We wanna delete these little keyframes right here, including these ones. Delete. We're gonna use the one frame forward to track it. Yeah, this is much better. Okay, we got the tracking data. Make sure that the uh, target is weapon null. Hit apply, X and Y, okay. We're gonna drag the weapon comp below it, and we're gonna pick whip just to show you in After Effects how it looks, and then afterwards, you can proceed either to uh, paste it back into Premiere Pro, or you can just render the scene in After Effects. You can pretty much do whatever you want. I'm just gonna go in, or Vepr KM, Go back to the comp. So I want to show you a cool little trick and the whole reason behind the two point tracker. So you can see it's tracking really good, but it's kind of bouncing in your face. And the reason for that is the tracked scale and rotation properties. What you want to do is you want to make this layer, the weapon comp layer, 3D. So to do that, you got to hit this little box right here. This whole column represents 3D layers. Now, if you can't see it, all you gotta do is hit F4 or toggle switch modes. Boom, there you go. So next, you wanna hit R, hold down Shift, hit P and S to display the position, scale and orientation or rotation. So you wanna play around with these settings right here because now the layer is 3D. But yeah, this is going to serve the purpose of uh, what I'm trying to explain here. In the next tutorial, I'm going to show you some advanced methods of how you can do the exact same things, but of course, better looking. And I'm going to teach you how to attach either text or objects to a scene and make them look really, really good. But instead of the motion tracking, we're gonna be using the 3D camera tracker. And this is a very powerful tool for compositing and I use it pretty much all the time. For example, this shot from my latest movie was created mainly using this effect and using some advanced compositing methods. So make sure to leave a comment down below and tell me what you would like to learn next. Consider subscribing because it helps the channel a lot. You can also join the channel to gain special perks. But that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.